everybody welcome back to the channel again nice to see you as you'll remember this is my garage my first room is behind this wall and if you remember from a few videos back i used to talk about the dread of opening the garage when i was having all those problems with mega tank well i'm glad to say it's been months since we've had any of those problems and i haven't even thought about seeing water when i opened the garage door so this is mega tank it's my eight foot long by four foot wide by three foot tall wooden fish tank that I've built that's just run problem free for months now um, all the fish in there are doing great yeah everything's going well except for one slight problem there's some water on the outside of the tank that should not happen so we've been here before with mega tank um, long time subscribers will know this has been a leaky boy for a long time but I thought I had solved them and I think I did solve it I think we're facing a different issue this time um, it took a while for me to figure it out, but if you look very closely at this support brace down here, what's actually happening is at the sides, um, there's no overhang or lip at all, but right in the middle, it's pushed out. So I think what's happening is the, the pressure from the water inside is pushing the glass and making it bow and making everything bow slightly and I've not done a good enough job in construction. So this isn't a liquid rubber fail. I think this is the first time it's not a liquid rubber fail. This is a, I mean, it's quite a big fail, but it's a construction fail. I have not accounted properly for the pressure or the load. So I've been investigating what's going on, where the leak's coming from. It's definitely only coming from here. I've been underneath all the way around, checking that there's nothing from any other areas. And it wasn't until I actually came back out from underneath that I noticed the overhang. So it's a good, it's almost a centimetre of an overhang. And it's all that pressure pushing to the front. I've been going through all the old videos that I made when I was constructing this. And I'm starting to suspect it's just something as stupid as I didn't put enough screws in there or didn't connect. These are actually two separate um, wood struts here. And then this is the base. So I don't think I've just... I've just not screwed them in enough or used enough screws so what I'm doing now is I'm going to drain this tank get these fish moved uh, and then have a look at it properly and then add some more screws um, these screws are rated to handle the pressure so just as it's just a case of using enough of them and I don't know if I've just made like a really silly mistake and not used enough screws or completely forgotten to use screws on the bottom one um, but we live we learn we try again so thankfully nothing catastrophic has happened, but Mega Tank is trying to explode itself. So I've dropped the water level a little bit just so as I can relieve some of the pressure. I'm going to drop it down a lot more and move the fish out and then have a look at this. But moving the fish out presents my next problem. So last time I had a, a leaky problem, I put up the swimming pool in here, which took up all the space. I really don't want to do that because it, it did take up all the space and made everything an utter ball ache to try and service all the other tanks. So I was on the middle of another project, so I might do that a little bit faster. But that's the fish room in there now. I'm in the middle of moving all this out because I'm building a garden shed. And then I was going to bring down my old display tank, which is a little bit leaky, but bring that down into here but I need to build a stand for it so I'm going to build the stand move the display the old display tank down here fill it move some of the fish or the bigger fish so maybe the snakehead into that tank because it's a five foot by two foot tank it'll do for a couple of weeks if I need it that long um, get that up and running fix mega tank and then move everything back again and then I've got my big tank all ready to go but I need to build a stand for it which is what some of that wood is for so I've started cutting up some of the wood Okay, there's the stand built. Uh, it's just a variation on the same theme of every other stand I've ever built or you've seen on YouTube, so I'm not going to go through it in too much detail. But the important points are that you don't want to rest all the weight on screws. So although you can see I've used screws to tie all this together, I've basically made one frame around the top, one frame around the bottom. These ones here are just to hold them in place and get me to the right height. It's these ones here which are actually holding all the weight. So the weight going down through these into the bottom one. Um, yeah, simple as that. 
I have seen way over engineered versions of this where you have multiple things going all over the place but basically we've got these ones to stop it twisting these ones to bear the weight should be good just need to figure out a way of getting the tank down here and onto it so stand belt tank heaved onto here thanks to the help of all my family and um, we managed to manhandle it down here i've gone and i've epoxied the base because this was a broken tank so we had to fix it so i've put down a layer of epoxy resin fiberglass glassed the hole of the bottom to seal that gave that a couple of days to cure got it filled and we have gordon and the giant garami in here now all the fish have been taken out of mega tank and put around the fish room so the two big boys are in here we've got the oscars in another tank silver dollars in another tank drained down mega tank so we can start to look at the problem and address the fix i've got this tank running on the fx2 and i put one of the sponge filters from mega tank in there as well um i've got a jump guard with just basically a few bits of lumber put on top because it's an open top tank they could jump out so i just wanted to weigh it down a little bit but yeah, this is very temporary. I'm going to break this down again. And this isn't the final location. I want to keep this tank. So once we get Mega Tank fixed, um, this will get reconfigured somehow. And there is a very sad, forlorn looking Mega Tank. So all the water's out. Well, apart from the last maybe couple of centimetres, I need to shop back that out, dry it out, address this. So this is the bit that's the problem. Fix it. Um, yeah and fill it back up again so this is the problem area it's this bottom course so we've got stand base of stand base of tank and then front framing these two are the bits that have moved now after reviewing all the footage that i can i can't really tell why and um, so either i didn't put enough screws in here or didn't put any screws in here so as a first fix i'm going to see if i can move this back the way if i can't I'm just going to secure it as much as possible and then double up on the fiberglass around the front once I've made sure that this can't move any more than it can. So ideally I'm going to move this back somehow, haven't quite figured that out, and secure it. If I can't, I'm just going to secure it where it is better than I secured it before and that should solve the problem. It's all about, it's all about pressures, shearing forces, strengths, that kind of thing. I've calculated that I can definitely put in screws that will hold this. Um, clearly, I didn't beforehand, whether it was a complete omission or just not good enough. But we can sort that out and try, but try again. Investigations so far. I've definitely got enough screws in this top piece. So there's basically two of these timbers, which are creating the frame which then screw into the bottom so I can see I've screwed the top into this one what I can't do without taking it all apart which I can't actually do is see whether I've screwed this one into this one and that could be the failure if I haven't screwed the bottom piece separately into the bottom into the bottom of the aquarium there's just not enough purchase for the screws that are going through here to take into the bottom which is why it would have bored out so Without taking the entire thing to pieces and starting from scratch, I intend to push this back into place, use some even longer screws that can definitely screw all the way through. But I'm going to do a kind of proof of concept as to whether or not I can actually push this back in. And the genius that I'll come up with, definitely not genius, I'm going to use this, this long timber braced against the wall over there this shorter timber braced against this and then in the gap a car jack that I can wind up to force that back into place so we can see whether or not it will actually do it and offhand I can think of about 15 ways this can go horrifically wrong so I thought I best film it just in case the tank explodes this explodes I explode who knows so nothing for it other than to just give it a go Need more hands. Need more hands, but I don't want to endanger any more lives than I have to. So that's basically going to go against that. So we 
we're in the general vicinity now. Obviously that wants to twist, but we don't want it to twist, we want it to do it properly. Okay, so it's definitely working, as in I'm reducing the gap, but this just wants to explode and kill me. So, I'm a little bit scared, so safety squints on everyone. Right, so the idea kind of works. But I think we're going to have to do this in stages maybe push in closer to the side, screw in, push in, screw in. Um, but yeah, in theory I think that's going to work. Right, that seems a lot more stable. We are definitely pushing things back in. I never said it wouldn't be dangerous. I definitely don't advocate doing this. <laughs> Okay, back to the drawing board ever so slightly. Right, that proof of concept done. I think I can push this back into place and what I'm going to do is drill some pilot holes all the way along here and then just work my way down in sections where I push it back in, drill some big screws through everything. So the two framing pieces and the base of the aquarium and probably the frame, uh, the stand rather with a combination of these big massive screws which go all the way down into the stand. These have a tensile strength of, I can't remember, I'll put it on screen, but with enough of these, that's going nowhere. That's the plan anyway. So I'm just gonna drill some pilot holes along here and work my way down. Wish me luck. Once I've got a few in, that'll be enough to hold it back without any water weight and then I'll go back and add more to give me the stability that I need. Okay, now we're in Mega Tank. Um, I've cleaned it up a bit. I can see what's going on and I can see what the problem is. So basically, if we look down here, where it was having all the problems before, um, we fiberglassed, we fiberglassed the glass in and siliconed it. Basically, what's happened is the pressure has built up over time, pushed that wood out, and as the wood has moved. It's delaminated, so all this middle section is basically coming away. The sides are both fine, but basically what's getting in is the water. It's getting into there, going under and finding its way out. So, if we assume that all these extra screws that I've put in are now going to hold that in place, it should just be case of filling this with a big bead of silicon, blocking that off, we should be good to go. Second thoughts, 
I need to let this dry out a bit um, and been looking at it and I think I'm just going to do the work now rather than test fill after siliconing and have it fail inevitably. So I'm going to cut out that bit that's delaminated and re-glass, re-fiberglass behind the glass, so where the glass meets the tank. Put in another fiberglass layer there and cover that up with the liquid rubber. Um, and that should be a more permanent fixture. So it's definitely, we know what the cause is, is this beam moved. Um, we should have put a stop to that now. So reseal it with fiberglass and we should be good to go. So just, I'll come back in a couple of days when it's dried out properly. So I've resealed everything. It's just time to let it dry. I've noticed, I feel myself a little bit calmer than the last few times this has leaked. But f***ing mega tank has sprung a f***ing leak. And I've had it up to f***ing here with a stupid f***ing fish tank. And it's stupid f***ing inability to hold f***ing water. It's purely because this is the first time I've seen it leak where I can see what the problem is. I can see there's a clear mechanical failure and I can fix it. I can do something about it. All the previous times, I didn't know why. I didn't know what the problem was. It's the first time the problem isn't liquid rubber. Yay! Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit more happy, philosophical about this one. I know I can make this work. I'm gonna use this time that we've got waiting for it to cure to plan a bit of a rescape, add a lot more sand, redo some of the decorations. So I've made this wood monstrosity of swim throughs, add some more rocks and stones and move things around a little bit. So if you want to see what happens, I'll end this one here. Click that subscribe button so you don't miss the next update and we'll get all the fish back in here hopefully. And if you want to join me on a Friday night, check out my channel 9pm UK time. Every Friday we do a live stream. Come and ask me any questions you want there. And I've got a second channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!